Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Firefly Season 1. <laughs> I did it, I did it, I did it. Episode 4 it is called Shindig, so full spoilers for the episode as always. Uh, and it's a Shindig, not to be confused with a gathering or a Hootenanny. No, no, they're all uh, they're all terrible names, Hootenanny's the worst. <laughs> Yes, mm. but you know who just who, who defined what these three were, right? Go on. Well, it was Oz, the lovable Oz, in season three of the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because <laughs> they're all feeling awkward that Buffy's back and they don't want to talk about it, so it's like, oh, let's just drown it out with music, and then we don't have to talk about it. So we'll have a hoot nanny. Hoot nannies are the worst. <laughs> Oh dear. All right, so Shindig is is a, an episode where we get, get to see the high society life in the Firefly world. Uh, it is a bit more Anara focused than perhaps the previous episodes. Anara, a little bit of Kaylee. Obviously, Mal's still a big part there. And we see Badger again, who of course was in the, the pilot. Uh, he's back because we're on Persephone, the planet where we visited in the, in the pilot. And they're here to to stock up and get a job, you know, get some cargo, kind of a similar thing. Um, again, it's one of these things where th this works well for us because it's like re, you know, re coming back to a place we saw in the first episode. But if you're watching it in the way it originally aired, it introduced some of these elements again, just some little things this time. But there's definitely like a couple of things there just to, yeah, you know. Uh, but I, I do think this one does work better. Like you know, like when you when you see Badger again, it's like yeah, this means more if we've seen Badger I, I before. Think this is this is the first one where. It really feels like okay. You probably should have watched the pilot. Yeah. Uh, so so here here we are. Uh, I do have notes. Of course you do. I'm not going to lie. It's probably more notes than I've taken so far. Uh, really, that baffles me because I felt this was the episode with the least <laughs> things of note. <laughs> I beg to differ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not my you. <laughs> Why am I even here? Why, why are we doing this? You better not do this on whatever the next show is. I will not stand for it. Because patrons, patrons uh, demanded it. That's what they did. We had a goal, so here we are. Um, oh yeah, that. Nah. Yeah, that was the <laughs> that, that was the reason. Uh, and keep by all means, keep hitting more goals. I mean, we'll complain when we hit the next goal and we have to do another ball movie. But I mean, oh, we we'll, we will complain hard, but. We'll do the damn thing anyway. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, I actually, at the end of the last review, I said something on the lines of, uh, I think this next one's my least favorite episode. I don't, I'm not as convinced as that, actually, as now that I've watched that again. <laughs> okay. I, I think in my head, I remembered this just for the the pompous, you know, Atherton dude and the, the duel. And I just remembered being kind of like, uh <laughs> Do you know what all that sort of stuff really remind? It's a, very specifically a movie that it reminded me of. Um, Barry Lyndon, you know, the the Kubrick movie. I have not seen Barry Lyndon actually. So ah, very good, very long, but very good. Uh, although you might not like it actually. Um, <laughs> hey, I've I've loved but, everything I've seen from Kubrick so far. So I mean, maybe this will be the one that defies that. Uh, I mean, given your tastes, may, maybe Kubrick can you know just be good enough that, that you, you'll like it anyway but given your taste i would assume you wouldn't enjoy it as much <clears throat> that's fair i mean um, kubrick's kubrick um i still have yeah. to i still have to see that and i still have to see uh spartacus yeah i've not seen that either kubrick, but I've, I've, I've seen most of the other I, big I sent an influx every time you do an influx you're like okay make sure it's not more than just over two hours well, both. that's when, it, when it, it's a busy period. When, when we've got a nice quiet period, we'll do it. Both of those movies are goddamn long. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying do Barry Lyndon, because <laughs> I've seen that one. <laughs> oh, there's a bunch of great Kubrick movies. The Killing, Lolita. Oh, there's a lot of good mm -hmm. Kubrick for us to mm -hmm. mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so, so, I mean, the opening scene is just kind of a simple thing. Um, it's really just there to kind of establish, it's like, this is just... For one little brief reminder, this is what Mal's world is, and Anara is in Mal's world because she's watching him play pool and get into a bar fight, uh, and it's like holographic pool. I noted down <laughs> just because it's the future. Because why not? Because yeah. picking up balls is too much effort apparently. Yeah. Oh, the ball flickered! Damn it! Stupid electric bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do it. Um, yeah. You don't have that problem if you just you know have real balls there. 
Yes, have real balls. That's the that's the, the, moral, the, of the, the, the moral of the story. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I mean, notably, Anara is like not that uncomfortable. She's actually kind of having fun being here. She she kind of integrates into this world quite happily, uh, which is in contrast to Mal <laughs> throughout the rest of the episode, where he does not very comfortably integrate into Anara's world uh, in the slightest. Yes. No. He's pretty terrible at. It. Pretty terrible. So, so, so is Kaylee too, to be fair. Uh, yeah. In, 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 I mean, they like a lot of people like her, but not for the reasons of her integrating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, she she does find genuine like people who are interested in her because she meets like some pre- you know pissy people. Uh, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I I don't mean to say that she doesn't get along with people. Integrating in terms of. Uh, being part of the society in the way that is expected. She's just like, ooh, buffet table. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's talking about engines and that, that impresses all yeah. the boys, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, there was a funny moment here where he steals the wallet from the from the, the douchebag, uh, who, who's a slave trader, by the way, so we don't feel guilty for her, you know? There's no, there's no yeah. sympathy here. It's like, yeah, steal his wallet. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. Uh, again, thief with the heart of gold. That's, that's, that's Malcolm Reynolds, right? That's, that's the whole thing. Uh, so we find out we go to Persephone. Uh, to stock up and whatnot. Uh, there was a great line here uh, on the bridge where, uh, like, Mal walks in the cockpit. In the bridge, when Mal walks in and they're talking about, they're excited about going down and getting a break and and all the rest of it. And Mal says says, uh, you know, well, we're only here to kiss the air, or touch the air, not you know, kiss the dart. And he's always like, ah, oh, I I wasn't planning on it. And then Wash says, I wouldn't stand for it anyway, Captain. A jealous man like me. I thought it was a funny line. It's not bad. Yeah. I don't, I don't, not, not, not one of my, not one of Wash's standouts from this episode. Oh, not, not at all. But Alan Tudyk, you know, he delivers these things well. Uh, he does. But I mean, again, establishing this is going to be a narrow's kind of focused episode. We actually see her picking a client. We see her like on a, a touch screen, kind of like looking at like video messages and saying, "Okay, which one tickles my fancy?" You yeah. know, we get, we kind of get that. Uh, and Mal comes in, and again, it's like he's kind of invading. He has to crack some jokes. Uh, there's, there's a great joke here about uh, stamina, uh, you know, because she says, "Oh, like he's he's enlisted my 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 services for a few days." He's like, "Oh, boy, must have stamina," and it kind of like comes back around a couple of times. This joke about hmm. about stamina. I'm gonna let a cat. Well, the joke has stamina. It, it, you know, it just keeps on going, and uh, that's uh, that's what that's what you get with a witty man like Mal Reynolds. <laughs> That's a terrible. You were struggling there. He was taking his time. I'm tired, to... and and I, th- I just you threw me off. He's still not quite in yet. He's sort of picking his head in the door. He's, he's kind of thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, cats are really terrible. Come on, come on, Which Garis. one is it this time? It's Garis. Yeah. They all turn here. They're all just napping. All right, Garis. Good boy. Good boy. He's 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 a war torn Garis actually. He's got a little bit of fur missing from his face because one of the other cats must have swiped him and got a little. You sure, it wasn't on. just a shaving mishap. <laughs> I mean, it could well be. Oh, there, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the whole shelf shook. <laughs> and again, yes. And again, uh, yeah. it, it was much more noticeable though, because it was right as you went off frame, and then boom, mm. straight in. Yeah, well, he's he's, he's been a mess. Well, I wanted to be on camera. So, where are we? We 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 are talking about uh, an hour and Mal. Uh, so so that scene ends. It kind of sets up the, the the episode. I've actually got a bunch of quotes written down for the next couple of scenes, just because there was a lot of really funny banter back and forth between the between the characters. Uh, was, you know, you know how um, we don't review sitcoms every week because we don't want to just repeat all the jokes. What's your point? I feel like you're falling into that trap with Firefly. Just here's all the jokes. No, 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 no. I have a lot of analysis about a lot of scenes. Uh, and to be fair, I actually take some of these quotes and actually talk about what they mean for the characters. And some of them are just jokes. That is yeah, true. Yeah, some of them. But you just said, oh, because there's some funny banter. We do that. We do this for every show. I just care enough about this show to actually note it down so I get it right. All you, right. Are you trying on. to tell me we don't reiterate jokes from Agents of Shield? Are you trying to tell me that right now? No, no. no. We do, but as they come into our head, just oh, that was funny, wasn't it? Not okay. This one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this one. Oh, yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna jot down that that joke. Structure, structure. It's boring. It's perfectly fine. The, the, the only thing that's disrupting the structure is you complaining about the structure. That I will, because it's, it's too rigid. Damn it. 
So they're looking at the, so they go off the ship. They're looking at this dress in the window, and Kaylee's all like, "Oh, look at that fluffy, you know." As oh, Mal rough. calls it later, layer cake <laughs> of a dress, <laughs> which I thought was quite an apt description. But so she's like, "Oh, it's pretty." You know, she wants to be a bit more of a girl, and blah blah blah. Uh, and she's like, "Captain, can I have money for a, a slinky dress?" Uh, and it's actually it's this washer says that but Zoe because because Zoe says something like oh yeah I was gonna I was I was gonna say that's that's not her saying yeah, yeah. This. Zoe's like oh yeah I can understand I I, I wouldn't mind you know wearing something slinky and washer's like Captain can I have money for a slinky dress and then Jane just says right after See, what's annoying is you've missed out the funny part of this joke for me already I disagree you can tell me what this what you no, think no, is no. the funny part no 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 because it's before you get to, to, to Jane it's it's still on wash because it's wash says. <sighs> Oh, I'll buy you the slinky dress, and then turns to Mal and goes, "Can I have some money for the slinky dress?" That's the funny part. You, him, not you know, uh, having that first bit in your quote is just just ruining the whole thing. I haven't gone to the funny part yet, though. Yeah, because you missed it. I didn't miss it. There's a funnier part coming up after this. Uh, no, there's not. That, 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 if you just let me finish, we'd get through this much quicker. Well, I wanted to say the proper funny part. Go on. So he says, Captain can I have some money for a slinky dress, and then Jade says, I'll chip in, and then without missing a beat, Zoe says, I can hurt you. Deadpan. That's the funny part. It's a funny part. It's <laughs> less funny. That's a quality joke. I'm I'm just, if you're going to write down the quotes of the jokes, that's fine. But at least get the other, the, 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 the setup to the first part. Because it's a it's a two for joke, right? It's it's a double bit. And, I, and I hope I, I hope the audience is noticing here that he complained at length about me noting down jokes, and then immediately, as soon as I started telling what one of the jokes were, criticised that I wasn't writing down enough of the dialogue. No, no, no. I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, you gotta do it properly. Shut up. Let's get on with this. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But I mean, the, the comedy does not stop here. Uh, the really neat moment at the end of this scene where Mal says something kind of mean, right? He says something kind of mean about Kaylee, about, like, there's no point in her having this dress. She'd be like a sheep on her on its hind legs. And Kaylee is, like, just heartbroken. And Zoe, like, you know, grabs stuff off the captain and says, you better stay in the ship, captain. Like, like you know, because Zoe... And again, this is kind of what sells this moment and how much she's... she's well, how he's overstepped his, his, his boundaries here because Zoe typically is, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you're my yeah. captain. Yes, sir. Right? Here it's like, no, nah, you just overstepped. Right, so now I'm with my tone. I am going to tell you that you you effed up, and yeah, but yeah. the funny part here is that Mal kind of is like oh, he realizes what he's done. He feels bad, and then Jane with his stupid big hat on, behind, you know, behind him, just says, "She upset or something." <laughs> ah, the most oblivious man in the world. It's great. It's great. Uh, but yeah, so they hear you say Badger, they go see Bad, you know, Badger shows up and like brings them in and it's like, hey, this job, this guy, he wants to, you know, transport his cargo. It's on his cargo and Mal quite rightly says, hey, last time, <laughs> like, did they go so well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you insulted my character. Although right now, the fact that you think I, I think I'm better than you is now what you're banking on and for me to get into this stupid gala, which happens to be the same gala that Anara is going to, so that he can talk to this, this lord that wants this cargo moved and uh, notably the lord uh, the actor uh, i recognize not his name but he was uh, the bad guy in a uh, dark man all right i've not seen that but i recognize him from something or other he's been on a bunch of tv shows yeah. uh, he played he played durant in dark man uh it's my thing which is funny because we just did a sam ray movie and we were, we were talking a little bit about dark man so well, yeah it kind of popped he, he's head. got one of, he's, I, I recognize his face i've seen him around i, I couldn't tell you where without going and looking it up yeah uh, so, yeah, so they basically accept the job. Again, there was funny banter in this scene, which I did not note down. I just thought it was, it was pleasant. Uh, I moved on. No. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, so we have a lot of stuff at the party. We have a lot of stuff of, you know, them entering and the, the, the concierge is announcing the guests as they come in. Uh, and it, it leads to the big entrance of Mal and Kaylee. Because Mal buys her the dress and he's like, hey, yeah. okay, I need a date for this thing. I'll buy you the pretty dress. Yeah. And you know, Inara's already in there. And she hears their name. She's like, wait, what? Yeah, she's like, Mal. And she's all, and it's almost like, he, as much as I said he's uncomfortable in her world, it's almost like she is also uncomfortable <laughs> that he's in her world. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Worlds are colliding. Uh, and that's good stuff. But, but it's notable that, that very, very quickly into the scene here when, when uh, Atherton, the, 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 the dishbag client of, of Inara, 
he actually cracks a joke about uh, everyone like you know is jealous of him because she's there with him and he says oh it's not it's not hard to define that they're, they're all imagining being in your bed he kind of like diminishes it all to just sex and it yeah. feels awkward it feels like he's just belittled her uh, and it's kind of interesting because we have this contrast between how he talks to her how mal talks to her we've talked a lot in the first couple of episodes i think about how mal uh it's will call her a game. whore and say things you know about her profession and quite neatly this episode very clearly addresses this where you know several times he kind of sticks up for her and when she kind of confronts him about you know, he immediately carries on calling her a whore. He immediately has calls on her and says, and she says, she calls that out and says, Wait, what, you, you know, you'll stick up for me, but you'll turn around and say that. And he's like, the difference says he disrespects you, I disrespect your profession. And I'm like, that's an interesting distinction, but I can actually kind of see it in the way he he talks to her and the way he acts with her bizarrely. Yeah, uh, no, there, I get it. It's kind of going back to like he's a thief with a heart of gold, where he's morally doing something kind of wrong, but he kind of sees the, in his own way, sees the the line <laughs> yeah i mean it's up for debate whether he's on the right side of the line either way i think sure but well, i don't think there's a debate if the other guy's on the right side though it's just either they're both on the wrong side of the line or yeah Mal's not. he's less on the wrong side of it yeah uh, he's he's closer to the line which doesn't yeah but again i'm not saying he doesn't have growth he has, there's not lessons he can learn there's not improvements he can make about himself it's just hmm in his own worked way, he thinks he's been the, the, the better person. And he has been oh, the he, better he, person. He definitely thinks he is, uh, in, in terms of the way he views it. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure, he probably is, because, I mean, at least he respects part of her, which is more than, you know, Atherton does, right? Yeah, like, and you know, I, I think a lot of, like, Mal, all in the fact that he actually has feelings for Nara, which, you know, is something that's, again, heavily hinted at in this episode. I think there's also the idea that he, you know, the, the, what he brings up here is that you know he he sees the way that the, the way that the men who buy her or buy her time, like the way they look at her, the way they treat her, mm. uh, and it is different. It's not it's not like they actually, you know, f- f- fall and fall in the traditional sense. And you know, Atherton kind of shows that several times in this episode. He says things like, "I know it's mine. You belong to me." You know, phrases yeah. like that. Like it's, it's very much like possessive. Is pos- the word possessive, yeah. Um, so. Uh, favorite line, in, well, two favorite lines actually. Uh, so there's a joke about uh, Mal's, uh, tr- you know, trousers being too tight, so she calls him Captain Tight Pants. This is Kaylee we're talking about, and then Kaylee, they're looking for this guy with a red sash on, and she looks over, and it's like the waiter's got a red thing, and she follows the strawberries again. This is kind of harking back to the pilot because we know how much fruits like. Yeah, she, she was very excited about. Was it was it mangoes? She was excited about. It was mangoes at first, but then the, the, the waiter's got a tree of actual strawberries, yeah, and yeah. she's like eyeing it up, and she's like, "Could that be him over there?" It's like. That's the buffet table. Yeah, but how will we know unless we question it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was the best line. Yeah, Kelly's good stuff. Uh, the others back of the ship are playing cards uh, for chores, which I thought this was a neat way of betting, actually. They've got like little bits of paper with like different yeah, chores. Yeah, they don't really have money. I mean, you could bet shares of the next job, I suppose, when you haven't really got anything. Yeah. Um, but this is more immediate and gratifying, and you can make Jane do your chores. So why yeah. wouldn't you? And he loses. Uh, assuming he doesn't cheat, because of course he does. Of course he does. Yeah, he he, he sw- starts swiping the the others' <laughs> chores. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after uh, after River makes a bit of a distraction. And uh, still, like because you it, it does it really like obviously the first time it shows you him actually reaching over and taking it, and the next time you don't even see it on camera you just see him kind of reach you know sitting back after he's reached and he's like okay he took more. He took more, yeah. Uh, and I think they know he was swiping stuff because the way they look at over when he says, like, are we going to play your cards or are we going to mess around? <laughs> yeah, so he's yeah. really gun ho about it now for all of a sudden. Uh, and River is going kind of crazy and, like, ripping all the labels off the, the, the tin food. Uh, and, you know, the book afterwards says, oh, it's not, not, no, not much harm done and we'll have a few mystery meals. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I was thinking about this scene because I was like, oh, I feel like there's probably some symbolism here, you know, and the idea that, like... The, the, the tins not knowing what's inside them i think it just represents her in a way it's like we don't know what's in her head we don't know why they're after her sure. uh i mean maybe there's more to it than that but that was kind of what i was taking from it and in, in the scene uh but yeah uh, and then zoe and wash have a scene as well uh, again it's just a kind of a romantic scene it kind of probably does the best exemplification of their relationship thus far because it's actually them being romantic with each other which is what i don't think we've yeah. seen yet which is uh no you get the odd little moment here or there very brief moments um but they're usually very professional yeah but it, 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 as professional as this crew can be 
yeah, it's kind of it's kind of romantic. It's you know it's post 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 coitus, if you will, and she's like, oh, let's just go to sleep and wash his cracking jokes about Jane like coming in and slitting her throat because he wants to be captain, <laughs> and then it turns into about reading poetry. This, at her this funeral. suddenly doesn't seem that romantic. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's all in jest and they're cracking jokes with each other, so it's it kind is, of, yeah. it's oddly sweet despite the fact that they're talking about her funeral and him doing poetry. Uh, she's very attractive, although not as attractive now that she's decomposing and is all disgusting. I, I, think, I think it was gross and corpsified. <laughs> gross and corpsified, yeah. Then she hit some of the pillow. Uh, yeah. But it was, no, it, was a really, it was a really sweet scene. And then we go back to the part, there's a bunch of cutting around here, because we, we got Kaylee on our own, we got Mal like over trying to talk to the Lord, and then it's like him dancing with Anara, and you know, then yeah, and he's really there. bad at talking to the Lord, because he just insults him immediately by not addressing him by the title, and the dude's like, hey, this sash, he's like, yeah, it's, it's very good. <laughs> yeah, poor Kaylee gets picked on by these like bratty, like rich princesses or whoever they are. <laughs> like, your dress looks store bought. Speak to your girl, Kaylee. Yeah, yeah. But she comes <laughs> over and gets rescued, and they they talk about some engines. Yeah, some old guy comes over and helps her, and like basically tells the others to piss off. And then she ends up. We, we get a scene of them like st- as all these guys standing around her, and she's like talking about engines and all impressed and laughing at her jokes and. It's like, yeah, I like that. Yeah. She found some people. Um, it's, it's it's notable actually that the commentary on for this on the the Blu-ray and the DVD it's the only one where it's the costume designers, one of the people on the commentary track, and I think it's quite no- noticeable on this episode. Yeah, it's very classical in the costume. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's a reason why these sorts of period piece costumes tend to win a lot of award shows because they're very elaborate, yeah. recreating things. This isn't necessarily a direct recreation of a time period because it's. Yeah, you know, it's it's the future, so it's an amalgamation of well, styles. There's a, there's a levitating chandelier. There is, of course, yeah. Which is mentioned multiple times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my point was, it's not adhering to okay. It's it's in this ten year period in history, and everything's got to be yeah, accurate. yeah, yeah. It's more just stylistically influenced. Oh by. yeah, the costume designer was basically like fapping to themselves. Yeah, like, it's like hey, the thought you of just this. do what you want as long as it looks classical. Yes. Uh, and I'm sure she had a blast. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, but no. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, insult to the psychotic life community, as in reference to Badger, uh, which you know was a neat line. Um, but yeah, and I know he done that and saying, you know, I know what's mine, blah blah." But he 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 goes to dance with with Anara. Yeah. So also, you know, you mentioned Badger there. Um, Cockney Badger is even more cheesy in this you know high society episode sure um because i i wasn't a big fan of that the first time with, with the cockney badger stuff uh i didn't you know it, it didn't really land for me it stuck out even more here in in this episode you don't like it no I, I, it's 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 a little too cheesy okay okay i uh, i like badger well enough i think it's because i like mark shepherd more than anything else um i get that uh, I think the main thing in this scene, though, is the, is the dance itself, and there's a debate between Mal and Anara as they're dancing, where he's kind of like, hey, that guy's a bit of a dickhead, why, <laughs> you know, and she says, no, he offered, he, he's made this offer, he wants me to, like, live with him and essentially be his wife, right? But I, I think personal companion, or exclusive companion was the, the phrase, yeah. but uh, that's essentially what it was, and he's, he starts, but what was interesting about this scene for me, uh, which I didn't remember about this episode, is that there's a kind of an honest debate here about the difference between their their worlds, where she's like, you don't understand my world and how like, these people respect me and how and how this works. And she compares it to his thieving and how he's, a, you know, a low life. And he's like, yeah, it's illegal, but it's honest. There's, there's no, like, dressing up. I do what I do, and it is what it is. Uh, you, you do this, but you pretend it's this high society. And again, it's not that he's necessarily right, but it was an interesting window into how both of them perceive the other one's yeah, world. Yeah, because like to, to, from her point of view, this isn't pretending, right? You know, this isn't dressing up. This is just how it is, and everyone involved knows exactly what the situation is. Yeah, but so it's it's not pretend if everyone's aware. But Mal does kind of have a point in the sense that. At least with Atherton, it's probably it varies wildly between your client to client. But with Atherton, there is like a there's a falsehood to it. There's there's a the way he treats her, uh, but acts like he's you know found the love of his life is 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 the is the lie is the falsehood. Sure, yeah, right. So there's so there's some honesty in what he's saying, but it, it's interesting because it gives you an insight into Mal's character as well, where he's like. You know, he appreciates it just being what it is. Like, you know, he's a straight shooter, essentially. He doesn't want bullshit. He doesn't like fuss or mess or mm. or, or quirkiness to it. He, he wants it to be as, as straight as it can be. Um, And, 
yeah, so that was an interesting conversation. And of course, it all leads to Atherton gets really upset watching them dance and just tries to like grab her and take her away. Uh, and he, you know, he's like, oh, I paid for her, she's mine, or something to that effect. And Mal punches him. And he's all happy. It kind of mirrors the opening scene in the bar. Uh, he's ready for a fist fight and he stands up and goes challenge accepted and he's like oh a fist fight all right and he's like no 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 it's a duel tomorrow <laughs> swords like, well, he doesn't even get to swords straight away he's got a duel this place tomorrow he's like oh I'll just do it right now go grab one of those pistols <laughs> and he's still you know extremely confident the gunslinger that he is yeah and the lord's actually like oh you you pissed off atherton so i actually kind of like you so i'll i'll, I'll like uh sponsor I'll you in your, this i'll be your second yeah uh, and if you survive, you'll have my business. But <laughs> he's pretty good yeah. with a sword. I don't like, don't like your chances. Is basically yeah. the thing. Uh, I love I, Mal's reaction. Though cracks me up though. When they, when they first say swords, he goes, "You suffer what now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we even see him training at one point. He's, he's hitting the sword into the into the pillar. It's like uh, you you were struggling against the pillar, Mal. What we'll, we'll hope have you got against someone who's trained in swordplay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Doesn't bode well. But yeah, so Badger's on the ship, he's got Kaylee, he's there to make sure they don't do anything, uh, which leads to a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, again, Anara has a scene with Mal where they're, they're talking uh, about kind of the world and him sticking up for her, and this is where they have the debate about, um, you know, uh, like, you know, I respect your, your, you, I don't respect your profession, whereas he doesn't respect you, that's the, that's the difference. Um, uh, my favourite line of that scene, though, is uh, where he's like, I'm not going to leave, I never back down from a fight, and she's like, Yes, you do. You do all the all time. All the time. Yeah, you always <laughs> run away. I think it was the added part of all the time was what yeah. really made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree too. And he's like, oh, okay, maybe I do, but... But, <laughs> but not this time. But not this time. She's like, God damn it, just run. Yeah. I know you down that Kaylee uh, was back in her, like, you know, her, her overalls, right, for the engine gear, but she still had the boner hair. Which I thought was quite cute. Like she's, she had like a greasy, you know, overall on. Yeah. Which had yeah. the pink boner hair. I just thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> and there's the sitting like talking about we need a distraction, and you know River kind of like stumbles Strolls onto the bridge, on onto the, not the bridge, sorry, the the, the the cargo deck. Yeah. Uh, the cargo hold, rather, I should say. I got, I got my terminology right because I, I care about getting it right. Unlike Connor, who uses the so cockpit. So do I. I, I. I. It's a cockpit. I don't care what they call it. It's a cockpit. And. She does this thing where it's it's kind of played into her powers and she's kind of reading Badger's character, right? But it's also just a really funny moment where she just starts doing his accent. Uh, yeah, pretends to be from the same place as him and, and you know, goes along with it. Yeah, and he's, he's kind of like, I like her. Someone from the old country. How, you know, how nice or something like that he says. Yeah. Uh, just, this is a really funny little scene. Uh, but again, the best part of this is that, that Jane's like deadpan at the end of like, isn't that the sort of distraction we would, we would have been looking for <laughs> to take out all the guys? It, actually, I was knowing in this episode... They're all just so transfixed by it, though, that they, that they don't yeah. even notice. They're all transfixed by her, you're right. Uh, what I noted, though, uh, about this scene, and uh, even the card-playing scene earlier, is that Simon's a little bit more integrated into the crew now, where it seems like Jane's yeah. playing games with him, and it feels like he's not necessarily going out of his way to be a dick to him every second minute, <laughs> you know? It feels like... He's kind of used to him, but even though there's going to be more with Simon and Jane, don't get me wrong, there is, but it yeah. feels like he's kind of used to him being around Settling now. in a little bit. Yeah. Is, is, is it... That, you know, that, that there with, with River? Yeah. Is that the longest she's spoken? Probably. I think it might be, and it's, it's kind of notable, right, that she's so kooky and out of it and fractured the whole time, barely forming sentences. Yet this here... Uh, you know, Joffa hat, she's just right, flipped into, you know, okay, let's put on the accent. Let's just, you know, call out this guy on all his shit and, you know, just ultra confident, essentially. To, to the point where Badger's even sent a guard after to watch her, he's just like, I like her. And that's kind of it. Yeah, she, yeah. She, she basically just goes, all right, Gav, <laughs> like, just yeah. like without missing yeah. a beat. <laughs> she does, she just, you know, drops into it. It's like, hey, yeah, I, I know you, like, guys, I, yeah, you, you, you've done some time show, but not as much as you claim. And, yeah, yeah, and it, it feels like okay, she's poking at nerves. She's going to react, and then he kind of just goes, "Yeah, fair play." Yeah, but again, it's a neat scene because it's again, it's her using her abilities, it's implying that she's kind of reading them, that she's picking up things from that. Yeah, and that's why she's able to do this. So yeah, it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. Um, oh, another great. Actually, 
Talk, for some reason, this this scene has like great exchanges between Zoe, Wash, and Jane because they're all in this scene when they're talking about distractions. Uh, Jane uh, says Zoe could get naked, and Wash doesn't even look up at him. He's just got his head down in his hands. He's like, no, just kind of like he's not even angry. He's just like, no. And then Jane goes, you just get the feeling that Jane suggests this all the time. Yeah. And then Wash is like, or so Jane's like, I could get naked, and then that makes him put his head up, and then everyone goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it cracks me up. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, sir. Oh, okay. Second page. Oh God, more pages. Second page. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, I already covered some of this stuff with an hour and it was cutting around a lot here, which is why we were kind of sticking to the one plot thread uh, mm. between them. But um, yeah. So the sword fight kind of happens. Uh, Mal looks like he's doing okay for a little bit, but the Lord and Anar like he's toying with him. And yeah, sure yeah. enough, Atherton's really good and kind of like, stabs gets, him. And he gets a good stabbing. Yeah, and it's actually Anar who kind of steps in and kind of saves the day by like distracting him by saying, "Okay, I'll you let him level. I'll stay here with you." And then Mal just uses that to punch the shit out of him. <laughs> Do you know what felt a little bit weird about the ending of this to me? Mm-hmm. So Atherton has him down, you know, at sword point. And uh, okay, it's it's good. He's he's going to kill him uh, until uh, you know Inara intervenes. Mal, you know, pulls off some skullduggery, right, and you know, get, grabs the sword, right, and he has him at sword point now. And they're all come up to him, like, "Oh, you've got to you've got to finish it, right? You got to kill mm-hmm. him." He's like, "No, I'm just going to leave it." I, you know, mix it a few times, don't be wrong. But I, I've got it, I've got it, these lines noted down. I'll get uh, to them in a minute. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you would. So I'll, I'll I'll leave that. But um, <laughs> it felt what felt weird to me is that Athan doesn't immediately try and get up and grab the sword and go back for him. It it just okay. He accepts that he's lost. Well, I think that's kind of the high society part of it, right? Where they've got these rules and it's but over. The rule was also to the death. Well, it wasn't so much a rule because that's kind of what they say, right? Is that this is a humiliation to not kill him? It wasn't like he has to kill him. I I got the impression the agreement was to the death though with the duel like the implication of the duel is to the death because that's why they're all saying oh you've got to do it and and Mal's just like nah I'm not gonna do that I mean I'm not gonna stick up for it too much because I ultimately like this is the weakest part of the episode for me in the sense that I don't really care about this these rules <laughs> yeah. but this is why I suspect you might not enjoy Barry Lyndon yeah that's fair um but for, for me it was like nah like Mal one he, he and he makes the choice to not do that so therefore it's just it's over and he's nothing he can say about it and of course they walk off and like an hour is like i'm not going with you <laughs> that's not happening uh and anyway he has to like shout and be like ah you know you whore i i paid for your time you belong to me and she's like and, and the lord slaps him down a bit it's like just accept it yeah you're gonna have to rely on your charm now to get <laughs> to get she, ladies she's blacklisted him yeah yeah, she's blacklisted him on the and the, the the companion circuit, as it were. Uh, but no, I wanted to, you mentioned that when he prods him a couple of times with the swords when he's got him down, because he says something like, "Oh, it's you know, it's the mark of a a great man." Uh, to you know, for, for mercy is the mark of a great man. And then he prods him with a sword and says, "Guess I'm just a good man." And there's like a pause, and then he prods him a second time. and goes, "Well, I'm all right." <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of shrug as he does the second one. Ah, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> really made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, so you know, and then they get back in the ship, and the the, the rest were about to do their plan. We're like, okay, uh, the docs like telling Book about the plan, and they're all ready to like launch. And then Mal shows up, and it's like, okay, no, no, no need for it. And, and, uh, Jane's like, we, we had it covered, Captain. We were about to do something. I swear, it was co- we were coming. For it was it. complicated escape and rescue. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then Wash is like, I was going to watch. It was very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh dear uh, and then the, you know the final scene of the episode is really just uh an hour and mal sitting in the you know in the walkway looking down the, the the joke at the end is we find out the cargo that they were getting from the lord was actually just cows it's, it's a really old school cargo <laughs> it's just a bunch of cows yeah um but you know it's just again it's them kind of bonding and her admitting she never really wanted to leave because serenity is kind of her home and who's going to look after you know Kaylee? It's, it's, it's everything but admitting that she likes Mal. That, that, that's basically yeah, some, it. Some Kaylee brewed wine. Well, it's not brewed, is it? Distilled. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's but fresh. Fermented. Fermented. It's fresh as as an hour puts it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and the one the one laugh I got here really was uh, where you know mal goes to show the stab and he's like oh, i've seen it i've seen it and then you know a minute later she says something he's like i was stabbed <laughs> and shows on the window again yeah um, i'm still trying to get the correct word because because it's not distilled 
It's going to bug me. Oh, well. Brewed? No, brewers beer and stuff. And that's what I mean. It, it's The process is closer to a brewing because it's, it's yeast. Right? Because it's, it's the same fermentation process in, th in, in theory. But it's not distilling because then you have to you know, actually you know, make it up to a, a higher concentration. I get shit for focusing on a few jokes too much. He, he's sitting here debating with himself what the correct word for making wine is. Screw you. Someone will tell me. Maybe next time you won't complain about me not, not, knocking down jokes. We, we added five minutes onto this with you whinging about that. Three and a half. This would have, this would have been a neat 30 minute review, but you, you bumped it up to 35 uh, with your whinging. It, it would have been at least 32. With your whinging. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, a lot of stuff in here, a lot, a lot of Anara versus Mel's world is definitely the most focused Anara's had. You know, the, the fact that we even see her picking a client is kind of like, okay, this is a, a viewport into her world. Yeah. And we get that, and we get how that conflicts with Mal, and we kind of get his warped sense of the way he speaks to her being really kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, demeaning. But in his own warped way, he understands kind of, you know, why it's different to other people. And it, like, if you come out of this episode, feel like you know more characters better, and then the rest of the characters get some funny banter, they get some funny jokes, uh, and some neat things. There's some more teasing about River's mind and stuff like that, but... Uh, that's that's kind of it. And it, it just it just in terms of mythology, it kind of builds up a little bit of the world again. So here's what the rich are like uh, on on one of the yeah, main planets, at, at least on this planet. Yeah. So I uh, I assume they, they kind of all have their own s societies and cultures, essentially. You know, on on all the different planets that are different to each other. Maybe there are similarities. And it, it reinforces this idea of the old meeting the new, where the, it's like that's the rich here like to have these classical parties, and it feels like the old times. Um, yeah, where in, in in some ways that kind of reinforces maybe just subtly why, or maybe we should be on the brown coat side because the, the rich people seem to want to have things like the <laughs> like the seventeen hundreds, which traditionally not a great time for most people unless you were rich and white, <laughs> you know, like yes, just just little things like that that add to the world building, which yeah. is nice. So it's it's what is interesting though you you say that. We don't really actually see a, a significant amount of examples of them actually treating, you know, the poorer people that much worse. We get, you know, the, the girls with Kaylee. And that's kind of the brunt of it, really. Atherton's a, a, a dick, but not necessarily because he's just well, treating everyone really I badly. Think, I think it's not so much that everyone who lives in an Alliance planet is, is bad, right? Because, I mean, even Simon and River were, were that once upon a time. And we see yeah. here in this scene that there's good people here. The old guy is like this nice guy who comes and defends her. Comes and sticks up for her. And, you know, and all the guys that you know she's talking to about engines seem perfectly pleasant. I would maybe relate it more to, like, two states where, you know, when you talk about, like... Not everyone living in Germany during World War II was a Nazi, right? It's not like yeah. that. It's, you know, but clearly the people, the party in power are the ones who are doing the bad things. They're the ones who are making life tough for everyone in the, 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 the outskirt planets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think it's when not all these rich people are terrible people yeah, oh yeah, by, sure. by the look of it, right? You know, uh, I mean, sure, some of them are. It, it, yeah, it's, it's probably more of just a, a realistic makeup of like, there's some good people, there's a lot of snobby people, there's some people who are just absolutely atrocious. Yeah, but then, and then you know, we go down to the other end of the, the social spectrum. We got Badger, who's a slimy little prick. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just kind of a realistic thing where there's, there's, yeah. there's good and bad in every level. Yeah, um, not, exactly. not, not everyone who's poor is this noble person who wants to fight for better. Yeah, I, I appreciate that it doesn't just, you know, lump all of the, you know, the upper class in as okay, they're all awful people, right? It's it's a bit more realistic and nuanced. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's that's there, and by design, I think do they make it feel like it's more of a real thing as opposed to. Oh yeah, to... yeah absolutely, because you know, you you just said then you know the seventeen hundreds were probably an awful time for everyone, you know, but probably not all of those rich people were terrible people. Some of them almost certainly were, but probably uh, probably not all of them. <laughs> statistically you unlikely. You would hope. You would hope some of them were nice people. I mean, I could be wrong, but statistically <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know the idea that some some both rich and poor will be ignorant to what's going on with the alliance. They just don't know the bad things they're doing. Just don't care. They don't know. Yeah. They don't... I mean, maybe they would care if they actually had it spelled out to them. I mean, that's kind of like something we get to towards the end of the story, which we won't talk about yet. But it's the idea of just letting everyone know what they're doing. Is, oh yeah, but yeah. I, I wonder if some of them willingly just choose not to want to know, especially in the in the in the rich areas. Like, sure. just, I don't want to know. I want to just be comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, and ign ignorance is one of the biggest problems when it comes to these things is people not just wanting to yeah. know the bad things that are happening and therefore not enforcing change anyway that, that's just somehow getting to a serious topic there um but here we are uh so that was uh, episode four of firefly next time we have safe so look forward uh to that uh you can and uh, by all means uh let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below like and subscribe for the record mm -hmm. my least favorite so far i would agree with that I, 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 as much as i actually think this one holds up a lot better than i thought it did from memory uh, yeah. uh, I can't remember a lot of them well enough. It's been a while since mm. I've watched them, so I've, I've kind of hazy memories of all of them. But hell, if, uh, if we get to the end of this and this is still my least favorite, like I am happy that this was the the low bar. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, if this is the lowest bar, it's not a terrible low bar, is it? No, not not at all. Because there's some great character stuff in here, and I, I think my memory of not liking it as much is just purely because of the set and the type of characters that we're maybe dealing with. But there are some good yeah, moments yeah. that come from it. So there is, yeah. Uh, but that's uh, that's you go that's Shindig. So uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what you think of the episode. Uh, if you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here and keep the content coming uh, and encourage more already cancelled after this one's done, uh, you can go to patreoncom slash TV where you can support us for as little as a dollar per month and get these already cancelled early. You get some bonus stuff as well and some exclusives. Uh, you can of course check out other reviews we do in terms of already cancels of shows that have already passed. Many of which are all pretty much sci-fi. Me and Connor have been working through Star Trek. Uh, we did all the original series where we're you know working through next generation now by the time this goes up we're probably just about starting season two or close to it um yeah. so check out that we're also doing classic cruise of the twilight zone and babylon 5 so there's a, you know, a bunch of old sci-fi stuff and of course we're reviewing new shows that they come out uh, that you can check out on the youtube channel or on the uh the various podcast feeds uh, you can find links yeah. to all those on the patreon page if you want to go there yeah there's a big pin post at the top of the description and it's got all the feeds that you could possibly ever want so that is uh, that is us. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV. Keep watching sci-fi. Keep watching Firefly. But curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs>